Number 30. For each of the following structures, determine the hybridization requested and whether the electrons will be delocalized. All right. And then we have the hybridization of sulfur. And thank you so much for providing the actual Lewis structure. Just know that whenever they're asking you for hybridization questions and you want to make your life a little easier, always draw the Lewis structure. From that, you'll be able to get the hybridization in no time. So here's the Lewis structure, and we're going to work off of that. Now, in this case, there's only one sulfur, which is even better. So we only have to find out one hybridization in this entire molecule. Now, just know that there are five total hybridizations ranging from sp all the way down to sp3d2. And these are just the orbitals that are overlapping to form your sigma bonds in your bonds that are in your molecule. Now, the easy way to just know what's going on with hybridization is a, a fun little trick, right, of just counting how many letters there are in each hybridization. So, for example, sp3 has one s and three p's, right? That's p3, three p's, and it's a total of four letters. And if I take one p away, it turns into sp2, but that's a total of three letters, and you get the gist, right? But now just know that those number of letters in the hybridization equals the number of things. So two letters, two things, three letters, three things. And just know what one thing is. It could either be one single bond. It could be one whole double bond. So even though there's two lines in a double bond, you'll group the double bond as one whole thing. Same thing goes for the triple bond. I see three lines, but I group it together as one whole thing and one lone electron pair, so two dots, is grouped together as one thing. So we just have to see what's going on around this sulfur. Well, let's see. It's got one single bond, that's one thing. It's got a lone pair, that's another thing, so that's two things already. And then I see a double bond. I will group the whole double bond as one whole thing. This charge is just telling you the charge of the sulfur. Charges do not get incorporated for things. Remember, it's just the bonds and your lone electrons. So there's really nothing more for the sulfur. So there's basically three things. So three things, three letters, and that is sp2. And that is your hybridization for the sulfur. Now, just take note that, you know, I can't take these electron pairs for the sulfur because they're not on the sulfur. They're on the oxygen. So they belong to the hybridization of oxygen if we had to do that. But we don't have to do it in this case. They only ask for sulfur. But you could always, you know, try more hybridization uh, practice. You could find the hybridization of those guys. If you do, let me know in the comments. And I'll tell you if you're right or not. But anyway, let's finish the second part of the question. We just need to know whether those electrons will be delocalized. Now, delocalized electrons is the opposite of localized electrons. If you're local, if you're staying local, you don't move out of your you know, hometown or something like that, right? You stay put. But delocalize means that they, you know, wander. And in the sense of chemistry... What these electrons do, especially the electrons of a double bond, they can swap. Meaning that if electrons are delocalized, the electrons of the double bond will swap over to another placement. But now the question is, can we do that here? Well, the thing is, is that they have to be, chances are, nine times out of ten, they will be the same element... And it's bound to the same element together. So do you see how you have two oxygens bound to a sulfur? And one of them has the double bond, and the other one has the single bond. Well, you say to yourself, well, why did they put the double bond over there? Couldn't I have drawn the same compound with the double bond on the right side and the single bond on the left side, right? Is this... Is this, uh, you know, a correct drawing? The positive would still be on the sulfur, and now the negative goes on this side. This is a fair drawing, right? They chose to put the double bond on the left, but they could have put the double bond on the right because 
it's the same element, oxygen to oxygen. These would be classified as resonance structures. Resonance structures are just different ways of drawing the same exact molecule. And if you have resonance structures, you have delocalized electrons. And that's what we're talking about here. The double bond could have been on the left with that oxygen, but the double bond could have been on the right. And they kind of like wander. They're not localized, they're delocalized. So these would have delocalized electrons. And that answers the second part. And we always got to end it off with coloring in pretty nice. This is my favorite part. So let me have this glory. <laughs> Beautiful. And that's the end of the question. So hopefully this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. If you want to help us out, please hit the subscribe button. We're almost at 30,000 subscribers at this moment. Um, and it's all because of you guys. I can't believe that this channel is, is growing the way that it is. And, you know, thank you for all the positive feedback out there. Thank you for your kind comments. Let's just keep rolling. Let's always keep learning. Let's keep studying hard. And I'll talk to you in the later lessons. Okay, bye-bye.